hoped on the illusion. Some people, when coming in contact with the truth, are overcome by fear. So, I decided to explain exactly what happens to them by telling a story. The story I'm about to tell, although absolutely true and real, sounds imaginary since it takes place outside the Matrix. We could think of it as the first part, the introduction of Plato's cave, as well as additional information for the allegory of the great philosopher, since Socrates, through Plato's writing, does not explain to us the reason why the prisoners are found chained and in delusion, looking at the shadows on the cave's wall. Well, our story is as follows. In a world which is outside human imagination, a game was illegally played, organized by a group of apostates. They sent criers, announcers, to promote their game and to advertise how interesting and live it was. Many inhabitants of that world hurried to a roar as participants. They stood in line and waited for their turn without wondering about the terms of the game or the true motives of the game's administrators. One after the other, they went into a small private room, lied on a bed, and the game assistants gave them special energy uniforms to wear and a helmet with a virtual reality mask to put on, which transported them to a fiction world. In the game, the player had a body, not like his real, spiritual one, but a virtual one, made of flesh. With it, in the virtual world, he could function as he liked. He could create, have relations, he could love, he could fight in wars, try, test and be tested, and generally live infinite virtual life experiences. The first trial of the game was free, but as soon as they all wore their energy uniforms, energy bodies, and the virtual life helmets, they started becoming addicted to the powerful drug of fall. They didn't realize it then, thinking they were just overtaken by the game they participated in. The game was divided in predetermined time durations, periods, of a definite cycle, and the participants called the end of each cycle death. At the end of each cycle, they could quit the game. They should never voluntarily break the predetermined life cycle because the terms of the game rule the heavy penalty for that. The addiction the game evoked to the players was so strong that they were unable to quit. So, they entered again and again into a new life cycle of the game of illusion like maniacs. After the first introductory round of the game that was free, if a player wanted to continue playing, he had to pay. The manner of payment, though, 
was absolutely dreadful. For each new entrance to the game, a part of the player's real, spiritual body was to be offered to the administrators. After all, the administrators had set up this quasi-game in order to eat the players, to absorb and assimilate them into their own existence, since their entire survival depended on this. The reasons for this are not to be explained in this video. God is a man-eater. For this reason, men are sacrificed to him. Thus, the players first started giving their real fingers, then their real hands, then their real legs, and later their real vital organs. After multiple visits to the satanic game of virtual reality, they remained in that bed with butchered, crippled bodies having just a head on them wearing the virtual life helmet. They would lose that too at some point. And then the truth came to show them their real condition and all those who had wasted many and vital organs for this game learned the truth and were overcome by panic realizing they had lost half of their real body. Their virtual projection into the game, which is their material body, could not understand what caused them that undefined fear when they would come in contact with the truth. But the soul has its own language, independent of words, to cry out its despair. And they wore their safety helmet again and shouted to others, warning them to stay away from that truth. And there were others who had given less of their parts. And when they learned the truth, they would wake up and cry out to others to wake them up so they too could be saved. And some of them would remain awake. They would take off their helmets and they would take up the weight of the cross of their horrid reality. Others, not being able to stand that unbearable reality, would put on their illusion helmet and mask and would sink again into the delusion of the virtual, erasing from their memory every trace of the truth they had once heard. After surrendering even their last real vital organ as payment, they will perish wearing the helmet of their virtual life. When the game administrators were informed of this disclosure revelation, they were worried and started spreading lies and false accusations, slanders regarding this truth, and with all means of intimidation, tried to avert the players from abandoning their game. Thus, some of those who heard the truth got overcome by fear and panicked. Either because the game administrators provoked that fear to them, or because they realized they had given up too many parts of their true body and were now incomplete. Which category do you belong to? Can you abandon this horrible game you call life and death? Or not? Are you one of those who got scared of the truth and in their panic put the helmet of illusion back on 
to continue their virtual life. Do you belong to the group who were influenced by the game administrator's intimidations or to those who, despite the fear of their condition, took their illusion helmet off and started the process of rehabilitation, preparing themselves for the time of their escape? Or are you perhaps one of the administrators?